We have reached the point of the OTR pop quiz. I should say the famous OTR pop quiz. And as I remove that from my jacket, Here it comes. we have some right. questions for you. It's only three pages <laughs> long. Don't fret. All right. We know that you are a big Olympics fan. Of course. By the way, you might be. Are you a big Olympics fan? Absolutely. Regardless? Okay, right. Yeah. Okay. I, I know about the Boston 2024. So, But let me ask you this question. Had... The 2024 game has been hosted by Boston. What river would have been used for the rowing events? And we have it on the screen. The answers are, are is it A, the Charles River, B, the Concord River, C, the Merrimack River? C, the Merrimack River. C, the Merrimack River. Oh, That's right. paying attention while he was trying to stop it. <laughs> while he was trying to get rid of it. <laughs> you served as, as we mentioned, the Assistant Secretary of Transportation under Deval Patrick when he was governor and grew up in Brookline. So we have a green line question right. for you. Right here on the screen, here's the Green Line question. In 1967, the Green Line was assigned its color because of its association with the Celtics, the Emerald Necklace, or Irish culture. All three of those would be great would fit, answers, right? but it's yeah. B, the Emerald Necklace. The Emerald Necklace, very good. Several sections of the Green Line branches touch parts of the iconic chain of parks and waterways. Question three, you're a graduate of Pomona College, and if you don't know where that is, it's in California. So is actor Richard Chamberlain, class of 1956, you were not in the class of 1956. He was a TV star of a miniseries in the 1980s that was based on a blockbuster novel. We'll give you a hint. I don't know if you need the hint because you're sitting there very confidently. Was it the Thornbirds? Was it Lonesome Dove or the Pillars of the Earth? I am less confident on this one, but I'm going to go with B, Lonesome Dove. It was the Thornbirds. Thornbirds. Okay. Rachel Ward yeah. was his co-host on the thing. You know, I hate he was too busy on the tee to watch television. <laughs> that's that's right, that's right. Okay. Don't you hate it, buddy? Give me another tee one, Ed. You're right. good at it. TV from the, the 1970s or whatever. Right, I'm right. sorry. You know? All right, we're going to finish with the state <laughs> auditor question. Since 1939, only one Republican has served as state auditor. Since 1939, only one Republican. Who was that man? On the screen, we have the names. Was it Thomas Buckley, Thaddeus Buzko, or Russell Abner Wood? So this is process of elimination. Buckley was from Plymouth County and a Democrat. Buzko yep. was Very from good. Essex County and a Democrat. Very so good. it must be Russell Wood. Very good. Very good. That was, and it is indeed. You win. So three out of four. All right. Not bad. Right. Bottom, you did very well, yeah, it's especially since your first one. You'll come back and... <laughs> Um, so speaking of the Olympics, uh, you were a driving force in stopping the Olympics coming to Boston in 2024. Did you watch, are you watching, did you watch the current games? And what do you think of Tokyo's handling of the pandemic so far? What's your assessment of how it's been done? So definitely watched some of it. Um, I'm a Team USA basketball fan. I was 10 years old when the Dream Team played in Barcelona. And once you experience that as a little kid, you're going to follow it mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. Uh, and I'm glad Jason Tatum did pretty well uh, over the course of the tournament. So definitely watched. Um, but it's in stark contrast to the success that the USA has had in these Olympics and the fun that it is to watch with what's actually happening in Tokyo. Japanese taxpayers are going to pay more than $15 billion to host these games, even when the polling in Japan showed that they did not want these games to happen and that coronavirus cases are rising over the course of the Olympics. It's putting them at risk. This is a reminder that as much as we might love the Olympics, it was never a good idea for Massachusetts taxpayers to be on the hook for those cost overruns, which is what the IOC requires when you sign that host contract. So if you love watching the Olympics, but you do not encourage uh, countries or cities uh, that want to be able to make money off of it, in fact, yeah. that are going to end up spending money, yep. Where do we end up holding the Olympics? Do we stop holding the Olympics? This is an easy answer. Let's find permanent yep. locations. Yep. You know, maybe one for the summer and one for the winter. The problem is the International Olympic Committee, which is this unelected, undemocratic body. They're in it for the money. They're in it for the attention and the fame. They don't want to change because they like being wined and dined by these host cities. That's what we figured out in Boston. And Boston residents and Massachusetts residents were smart to reject that bid. Yeah, you're, you're spot on with the, with the permanent location for the games. And, and what is Tokyo going to do with these empty, massive facilities that have not been used and they are just sitting here and they have to pay the bill for them? Right. All right, it, it, it's still early, and we're because I mentioned the, the auditors' race is in 2022, and and the gate is still barely opening right now. But you're running. Is it fair to say you're running far behind Diana Dezoglio on fundraising? Is that a fair statement? Not at all. Okay. We've outraised our opponent in both the month of June and the month of July, which is the two months we've but been in this race. she's got more money in the bank she's than got you more do. Money. Well, sure, she started as a state senator, so she has all the fundraising she did before she jumped in right. the race. But since the race has started, we've outraised our opponent. So where is your base of support and how will you contribute is different from hers? Our base is gonna be across the entire Commonwealth. You know, people rallied to the No Boston Olympics cause from every corner of the Commonwealth. 
we had an average contribution size of 100 bucks compared to our opponents. We got out spent 1500 to one on that campaign, but we had the grassroots with us. And then I've also spent time at Transportation for Massachusetts over the last four years, going to every corner of the state and talking to people in Pittsfield about the lack of bus service on the South Coast about 60 years of them waiting for South Coast Rail to return, or a community like Chelsea, which is suffering from air pollution and needs more attention and environmental justice applied there. So we're gonna have folks from every corner of the Commonwealth rallying behind this campaign who want an independent auditor, someone who has experience reforming the bureaucracy, but also has worked in the private sector. That combination is unique in this race, and I think it's what we're, how we're gonna win. Chris, thank you for your time. Thanks for coming in. Thank you both. Great to see you. Great to be Our on. Thanks again to Chris Dempsey. He wants to be the auditor.